Welcome to discussion 31. In today's discussion, we'll continue with focusing on section 5.5 on U substitution. And in this video, we are going to do some more U sub examples. Okay, so I want to look at problem number 10. This is from worksheet 14. And I want to look at parts B and C of this problem first. So B has this integral of x squared over x plus 1 dx. So first, I want to give you four minutes to try this. Pause the video in four, three, two, one, pause it and try it for about four minutes. All right, so hopefully you did that. Hopefully you paused it and tried it for about four minutes. Okay, let's talk about it. So I'm gonna do this in two ways. So I'm gonna do an attempt. I'll call this attempt one, or I'll do a u sub and let's let u be x squared. Cause I might think, hmm, okay, du, du, the derivative of this would be two x and I gotta write the dx next to it. And I might notice, well, I, I do see a constant multiple of that uh, without the two on the denominator. I see an x there, uh, but there's that plus one with it. So, you know, it's not exactly this. Okay, but let's just try it. Let's see what happens. Okay, so if I rearrange this, I get du over two x equals dx. And if I start to sub in, we will get the integral. The numerator is u, the bottom is still x plus one, and the dx becomes du over 2x. Okay, and we don't get a nice cancellation here. And the reason for that is my du was 2x dx. And I don't see that in my integral, even off by a constant multiple. I do see an x in my integral. It's just in the denominator, unlike in du where this 2x is in the numerator. So I don't exactly see du in my integral, even off by a constant multiple. Okay, so when we have lingering x's after, like this, even after we do a u sub, we could try to use our u sub again. So if I try to use u equals x squared again, what I would wanna do is figure out what is x so I can sub in for it. So if I square root both sides, I get square root of u equals x, but I gotta put a plus or minus because I'm even rooting both sides. Now let's plug in so I can pull the one half out in front and I get integral of u and then x plus one, well that'll become plus or minus root u plus one, and then times this other x, which is gonna be plus or minus root u. And then we have the du. And there's a couple issues with this, like we have the plus, plus or minus, and we're not sure which one do we use. But overall, but I would say the bigger issue is that we made the integral harder than what we started with. We made the integral harder, I put a sad face, Okay, so that's not what we want u sub to do. We want it to make the integral easier. Okay, so let's try this different way. Attempt two, let's try a different u sub. What if I let u be the whole denominator, x plus one? Then du, the derivative of x plus one is just one, but I have to write the dx next to this. Okay, so now I'm gonna sub in. So doing that, our integral becomes, we get x squared on the top, the bottom is u, and dx, well, we know dx is just du here. Okay, so I still have some lingering x's. Let's try to use this u sub again. Let's use u equals x plus one again. Okay, and let's try to isolate the x. So we get u minus one equals x. And now let's plug that in for the x that we see here. So that'll give us the integral of u minus one being squared over u du. Okay, so we have this integral. And this we could handle if we simplify it a little bit first. Let's square the top. Let's expand it. That'll give me u squared minus 2u plus 1. If we foil it out all over that u on the bottom, du. And now I can split this fraction up into three fractions. This is going to be u squared over u minus 2u over u plus 1 over u. All right, so and if we simplify those, we'll get the integral of u minus two plus one over u du. And now we're ready to do this antiderivative. Okay, so to get to this point, you know, I did this initial u sub. I did that, but there were still some lingering x's. Okay, but we didn't worry too much. We just said, okay, let's try the u sub again. And then I had to isolate my x. And once we did, we were able to plug in for that lingering x. And then we ended up with this integral that's completely in terms of u and we could handle. 
So now if we finish off this antiderivative, we'll get u squared over 2 minus 2u plus ln absolute value of u plus c. And then we got to plug back in for what u was, which is x plus 1. So we get x plus 1 quantity squared over 2 minus 2 times the quantity x plus 1 plus ln absolute value of x plus 1 plus c. And that is our antiderivative. All right, let's move on to the next, uh, next part, part C. Okay, similar looking integral, but slightly different. The powers are slightly different. So first I want to give you four minutes to try this. Pause the video in four, three, two, one. Pause it and try this one for about four minutes. All right, so hopefully you did that. Hopefully pause it and tried it for four minutes. So let's, let's talk about it together. So for this one as well, I'm going to try it in two ways. And I'm doing that a lot with these u sub questions because it's, it's very natural, especially in the early going when we try inter integration questions to try one thing, have it not work out, and then we got to rethink and, you know, refine our strategy or, you know, change our strategy a little bit. So I'm, I'm trying to walk you through, you know, what does that look like if I do something and it's not right? Okay, so what if I first let u be, maybe I'll let it be the whole denominator? Because that worked in the last one. What if I try that again? du would be 2x dx and I know at this point it's not going to be perfect because it would be really nice if my numerator was x because then I see that in du just off by a constant multiple. It would be off by this 2. But I don't quite see that in the numerator because the powers are off. Okay, but still maybe I can work with it. So let's isolate dx and get du over 2x equals dx and if we try to plug in, we'll get the integral of x squared on top and on the bottom, well, let's see, what do we have? We have, uh, that becomes u, and then dx is du over 2x. Okay, so this becomes 1 half in front times the integral. I could cancel an x and leave myself with an x on top, u on the bottom, and then du. So we have some lingering x's, so we could try to use our u sub u equals x squared plus 1 again. So if we do that, let's rearrange to isolate x. I'll get u minus 1 equals x squared. And if I square root, we'll get plus or minus square root of u minus 1 equals x. So now let's plug that in, and I'll get 1 half integral. The x becomes plus or minus root u minus 1 over the u on the bottom, du. Okay, so I, you know, I do have my integral completely in terms of u. There's just two issues with this. One is we're unsure whether to use the plus or the minus. That's a major issue. The other issue that I see with this is this integral looks worse than the one that I started with. This is harder than the original integral. Okay, but we want u sub to make our integral easier. All right, so let's try this another way. So I'm going to call this attempt two. So attempt two is with the function that we had in our integral, which was x squared over x squared plus one. Maybe let's try to simplify this somehow. So I'm going to try to simplify it. And I'm going to really go back into my like algebra toolkit to help me with this. To simplify this, I'm going to use long division, long division with polynomials. Or if you want, you can use synthetic division, um, but I'm going to do it with long division. It's the same thing, just, you know, execute it slightly differently. Okay, so the way I do this is I take uh, the function that's on the numerator, the x squared, and I write that inside of my division symbol. So I'll put an x squared, but if there's any sort of missing terms, like there's no x term, there's no constant term. I write those as a plus 0x. There's no constant term, so I'll put plus 0. And then the function that I'm dividing by, the thing on the bottom, I write outside of the division symbol, x squared plus 1. And then I need to think about what would I need to multiply this term by so that when I multiply the first term by that thing, it'll perfectly match up with the first term here. Okay, so I would need to multiply by 1. And I'm actually going to write the 1 
over here so it lines up with the constant term underneath. Okay, so when I multiply one by x squared plus one, we get x squared and then plus one. And notice I'm lining up these terms underneath the same sort of degree term. And now I subtract. I subtract like I would with you know, regular division with numbers. And when I subtract, the x squares will cancel and I'll get zero minus one, which is negative one. So that's my remainder. What this has shown is that x squared over x squared plus one equals, it equals one, that's what I had over here, and then minus this remainder one over what I was dividing by, x squared plus one. So I'd encourage you to check that this is the case. So with these terms, simplify, get a common denominator, and convince yourself that it equals this function that we started with. Okay. But this is nice because now when I do this antiderivative, this is just, we're just doing the antiderivative of one minus one over x squared plus one dx. And I know how to do the antiderivative of one over x squared plus one. Okay, so the antiderivative of one, that's just x. And this fractional function, that's arctan. So we get minus arctan of x. And I gotta put the plus C because this is an indefinite integral, which means general antiderivative. And that's my answer.